That was perhaps the worst take I've ever done in my life. Say, David. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is David, and today I want to talk to you about the seven pieces of essential kit I believe you should have when starting a home gym. Before we get into it though, I'd like to caveat this video with the fact that this is of course my opinion based on how I personally prefer to train and how I used to train clients as a PT in the past. If this sort of equipment is not the sort of stuff you're experienced with using or even enjoy using, then that's cool. Get what you think will suit you and your budget best. In my opinion, these seven items have the greatest bang for their buck. <laughs> ha! and can provide you with the most well-rounded training experience, allowing you to train effectively for strength, muscle growth, fat loss, and cardiovascular fitness. Anyway, let's get to it. First on the list is the barbell. Now, the barbell is the singular most versatile piece of equipment you can purchase. It's the primary tool for strength development around the world, and it can fulfill different needs, whether they be for strength, speed, power, muscle size, and metabolic conditioning. You can train every muscle group with a barbell. For example, you can squat for your quads, deadlift for your hamstrings and your butt, bench press, an overhead press for your chest and your shoulders, and bent over row for your back, alongside many, many more exercises. Barbells can be purchased purchased in many different variations, with differences coming in weight, thickness, bendiness, also known as width, length and knurling design. It's quite easy to get bogged down in the details with all of these if you aren't super seasoned in barbell buying. So the main thing to consider is quality. If the barbell is referred to as an Olympic bar, then it will most likely fulfill the standard, most common variation of bar and will be suitable to anyone that isn't an elite powerlifter or an elite Olympic weightlifter. Good brands to look at for barbells are Rogue, Aleco, Bulldog Gear, again faster, ESP, fitness and if you're UK based Wolverson and strength shop you don't have to spend silly money on a barbell a couple of hundred bucks or so is a good ballpark to look if you don't need a speciality bar number two is of course weight plates you can only do so much with just a barbell alone it probably goes without saying that the weight plates provide you with the opportunity to incrementally increase load on any given exercise so as to continuously elicit a physical adaptation so that you can keep getting stronger faster bigger and more powerful when it comes to whether i recommend bump plates or regular plates Mm, this is dictated by the type of training and in turn the type of flooring you have. For example, if you generally prefer bodybuilding style training where the likelihood of you dropping the barbell outside of the rack onto the floor is very low, then regular plates are just fine. If you're likely to be doing a lot of Olympic weightlifting or CrossFit style workouts, then bump plates might be a better option. I personally have bump plates currently, but that's because I did a lot of ollie lifting when I first purchased them. When it comes to plates, you can get away with paying a little bit less for these. If a company sells a budget option then these will be perfectly good enough if your budget is tight. Number three is a squat rack or stand. Again probably goes without saying but this provides you with the ability to squat and press effectively and safely without having to haul the bar from the floor up to your shoulders first. For this particular item I would recommend you go for a rack, preferably some sort of power rack variation over a squat stand. The squat stand definitely has its place. They're more space saving and easily moved but are arguably less safe due to them being more prone to them tipping over when unracking and re-racking barbells from them. And that's not a situation that we really want to be in with a heavy load on our shoulders. Racks are more sturdy, usually have safety pins or straps that mean a dropped barbell or failed rep is not the end of you, your back or your floor. Obviously these take up the most space so that may be the biggest factor in deciding whether you get a full rack, a half rack or a squat stand. Some companies have even developed some pull off the wall racks that provide the best of both worlds in terms of space saving and rack sturdiness. If you have room and can afford to get a rack with a pull up bar on it too, that's an added bonus. Number four on this list is an adjustable bench. Now, I have ummed and awed about whether this is a good idea or not. I've seen other people suggest that a flat bench is fine, and I think up to a point it is, but arguably if you want a bit more versatility, an adjustable bench would be best. That way you can press and row from all angles, from flat all the way up to a vertical back position. They're more expensive than purely flat benches, but the added versatility I think outweighs the cost difference. The bench is also a bit of a sleeper item in terms of the level of quality that people are willing to pay for. Most 
people think of a bench last and spend most of their budget on all the other things. Trust me, a crappy made, unstable, rickety bench is worse than having no bench at all. One, it's a shitty experience, and two, it can be quite dangerous dependent on what exercises you're using it for. Honestly, pay a little less for the bits above and buy a worthwhile adjustable bench from one of the brands I mentioned earlier on. Next up, at number five, we have dumbbells. Now, dumbbells similar to a barbell are incredibly versatile and can be used to train the entire body. Their benefits include additional exercise variation, increased range of motion in certain exercises, and the ability to do more unilateral loading and exercises. With this, it's so easy to see a full set and then see how much it will cost, and you just shit the bed and get turned off to the idea. That's perfectly natural. Having a full set is not cheap because of the amount of metal it requires to make up the set. The cost of dumbbell types vary from brand to brand, with the rubber-coated hexagonal ones most brands sell to the rubber-coated circular ones you see in most commercial gyms to the stainless steel over-engineered ones you see in more specialized or high-end gyms. If space is also a problem, I would definitely recommend going down the adjustable dumbbell route with options like the power blocks, the Bowflex adjustable dumbbells, or of course the one thing that you see quite regularly now is the Olympic dumbbell handles that you can put small barbell plates onto to build your own dumbbell. These might be the best option for most people, but if you do specifically want a full set for something like CrossFit workouts, then you might need to take the collector's approach and pick up two or three pairs at a time over a prolonged period of time to spread the cost. That said, a lot of companies do offer finance these days, but still I would recommend you only buy what you know you can afford. Next up, sixth on the list, if you will, is a pull-up bar or some form of suspension trainer such as rings or TRX handles. If you can get a rack with a pull-up bar attached, then you're good to go. The inclusion of these are purely for added versatility. With a pull-up bar, you can add rings or TRX handles to train body weight variations such as body weight rows, body weight presses, and they can also add as progressions and regressions of all pull-up and push-up exercises. All it takes is to change the angle of your body to alter the resistance of the exercise, so they're very vertile. Vertile. Say David. So they become very versatile. I don't currently have a pull-up bar in my home gym because my ceilings are too low and I'm too tall and I really miss being able to do pull-up variations. Last but not least, we have some form of cardio machine, such as an air bike, a rower, or a ski erg. These are fantastic pieces of kit to really round out the home gym experience. Tight for time and want to bury yourself? jump on an air bike for 20 minutes and dig deep. That's a worthwhile workout. Want to add some low skilled cardiovascular work to the end of a weight session? Jump on the rower and do some intervals on there. Want to mix these sorts of exercises into your weightlifting in a Metcon style workout? then you can, easy peasy. Honestly, of the seven bits of kit I outline here, this is the least bang for your buck in its most basic function as you can only row on a rower or bike on an air bike, but they're amazing and they can be used to create a great deal of variation in your cardiovascular fitness and energy system work. My preference would be to get an air bike above all because it requires the least amount of technique, but beyond that, I do love the rower too. So there you have it. They were the seven essential pieces of kit for any home gym. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I'm turning this around to you. What do you think is essential for home gyms? Do you agree with my list? Or are there other things that you would prefer to see in their place? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll definitely be keen to have a read through some of those and get chatting to you guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was useful. If it was, please do like the video, share it with anyone you think might appreciate it, and I hope it made you decide to subscribe if you haven't already. I've been David, you've been Chuffin' Wonderful, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Peace.